Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Tuesday evening for the continuation of the Style Esports Season 14 playoffs. Tonight, we will be taking a look at the Demacian division, where the bracket has devolved into absolute chaos. The top three teams in the division were all relegated to the lower bracket after the very first round of the Rumble stage, with second seed Madison Farmers now being completely eliminated from the tournament. Everything is on fire. The first place prize money of 100 US dollars is completely up for grabs. With all that in mind, the squads that will soon be hitting your screens are fourth seed Mythic Ascension and eighth and lowest seed Mythic Fallen. Now, the Fallen had a big hand in plunging us into the aforementioned chaos, as they were, of course, the ones who handed first seed TDS Project Portal their first match loss of the postseason. In order to accomplish this, I think it is safe to say that the entire team overperformed, but especially the mid-jungle are the positions that I think we should be looking towards. One pick to look out for would be the new Aurelion Soul mid laner MTC Papapu piloted it to great success in both of their wins in the matchup against the one seed, including a 9-0 and 11 scoreline in game three that allowed them to snowball to a victory in less than 26 minutes. Facing off against them, the Ascended Mythics had what was on paper a significantly easier opponent for their first matchup in 5-seed White Vex. This match also went to all three games, however, and it took some very strong performances from their own mid laner, MTC Jazz, to take the victory. Jazz went with the Azir in the team's two victories, games two and three, with a similarly impressive scoreline, especially in that third game, sitting at 8-0-5, and five, allowing his own Mythic Machine to finish off their opponents with almost the exact same time on the game clock, just under 26 minutes. Will the Fallen continue to surprise us and begin an unprecedented rise through the Demacian Division, or will they be struck down by their sister team as the Ascension look to take the throne for themselves? Live from the Video Ninja Room, my name is Chris Crewman. I'm joined tonight by the vivacious Verdant Chaos, and it is nearly time to begin this truly mythic matchup. How are you doing tonight, Chaos? I'm doing quite all right. I'm quite excited to see both of these teams coming out. As you mentioned before, they're both sister teams, and I have personally uh, played with and against some of these people, so I'm, I'm doubly excited to see more of these players uh, going at it here. I'm surprised to see uh, Cheesy Sammy here in the top lane for this matchup. Uh, when I played with him, he was a mid laner. So I'm going to be quite interested to see how he does in the top lane for this uh, matchup. Yeah, but... definitely. Uh, some some strong top laners on both sides as well. I noticed that Kraith Heil for Ascension picked uh, Shen a couple games in a row uh, in that last win. So could be a pick to look out for as well. So right now we're going to be getting underway with the draft. And we're already coming out with... Oh, no, they got rid of uh, GP. I'm sad to see it, but... Yeah. The Azir as well, going to get removed by the Fallen. Asol still up, though, for now. Could be first picked. So, right now, I think I have casted about 11 ga like separate games with Asol in it, and I haven't seen Asol lose yet. So, I... I, I think he is quite strong right now. I, I haven't seen... I, I don't know exactly what his percentage stats are for like flex and or solo duo, but that's going to be, looks like Fallen going to be banning him out, getting him out. We're not going to be seeing that. So that's going to be effectively three mid lane bans from coming up from Fallen. So they're quite scared of Jazz here. Yeah, I mean, I kind of called it out uh, already, right? Keeping an eye on that mid lane, I think is going to be really, really important in tonight's series. Uh, and I, you know, I think the Aurelian Soul ban, honestly, uh, makes some sense. They don't want that to get picked away from them because it is so powerful right now. And the Leona first pick for Ascension, not something that I necessarily saw coming. What do you make of that one? I, okay. What, what that says is we want something that has strong engage, has a slight potential to roam, but or could help set up for a scaling bot laner. Like you could possibly like throw like an Aphelios with that and you could play for like a very late game, but I, I'm quite interested to see first pick Leona that maybe kind of shows their hand a little bit of what the team exactly wants to do. And Leona really likes to set up for some of these dive options or kind of this front to back team fight. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's very face up from Mythic Ascension, just sort of saying like, we are going to engage on you. Like we are going to have 
a comp that wants to fight, and we are going to have tools to engage. So it's kind of giving Fallen the opportunity now to draft themselves some peel, some disengage, which we already see coming through with the Ezreal Karma bot lane. So right now with uh, with that poke bot lane, A, as you mentioned before, they have peel, but Ezreal is able to just freely get out with the arcane shift. Like, like he's able yeah. to buffer through the Leona stun. So right now, Leona's going to have a hard time, and it's kind of hard to engage when you're half health when Karma and Ezreal is poking you into oblivion here on the bot side. But that's going to be Jazz picking up Syndra here. They're going to be picking it up before we get the second round of bans, and they continue to ban him out more and more. Yeah, I mean, with the mid lane focus, uh, you know, allowing your mid laner to drop down to the 4-5 and the pick and ban could be a really, really dangerous decision. They, there's the possibility that they could just get completely banned out, right? So go ahead and uh, locking in the Syndra now for Ascension seems pretty good. And then the Ash, of course, another very, very powerful pick in the meta. We see her more often support these days, of course, uh, but still not going to be a problem to move that Frost Archer into the AD carry role once again. So right now, Ascension is saying that when it comes level 6, we are going to kill the Karma. Like, I, I think that's going to be the main focus of that lane. I don't know how effectively they can kill Ezreal. Obviously, if Ezreal Arcane shifts into them, they can return the kill and run him down through the lane. But for the most part, if Ezreal plays with a, ha a good head on his shoulders, I don't think they're going to be able to kill him very effectively. But yeah, I mean, we're going to be seeing a lot of scaling come out from the side of Fallen. Definitely. Yeah, that's uh, that's what the Ezreal does. He's uh, really good at not getting killed, generally speaking. Uh, but yes, there is a lot of scaling with the Victor coming through. You know, Syndra, a pretty powerful scaler these days in her own right. So some pretty decent scaling, I think, on both sides drafted so far. And there's going to be the Shen that will get removed. Not going to be seeing Kraythile on that one, at least for game one. So right now... You, you do have a tank with Leona on the side of Ascension, so they can play, and they can now, like, kind of pick for some more of these bruisers. They could all continue to, like, do some more tanks. Not saying you necessarily have to go tanks, but um, I think Fallen, maybe a possibly good pickup for them would be an Orn here, because the, mm. right now you need, uh, you have Ash and Cinder who can really kind of poke and slow you, and you have a hard time into that, but Orn can kind of take a lot of abuse and set up uh kind of for counter engage or set up for engage very well by himself definitely i like the possibility of the orn as well uh really it's just you need some engage on the side of fallen right because yeah uh if you don't have any engage then you absolutely run the risk of of just getting poked out by the ash syndra like you were just talking about there uh chaos so I think uh, that will be the focus for Fallen in the 4-5. or five. And uh, on that note, some really good bans coming out from Ascension, removing the Udyr and the Zac. The Zac especially, I think, would be a, a great way for the Fallen to start fights, but won't be an option. Orn's still available, though. See if they decide to go for the, the Forge God. So right now we have we obviously have jungles and top laners. I think they would most likely save the counter pick for Fallen for uh, the top lane here. But it, yeah. they might go for a flex pick here on the fourth one. We shall see. That's going to be a Mumu. The yeah, sad Mumu mummy child. Kroom. Yes. Kroom, the jungler for, uh, for Mythic Fallen, is the highest ranked player on the team. Fun fact for everybody out there. Currently uh, able to climb their way up to Diamond 4. So pretty impressive stuff. And uh, going to be on the sad mummy this time around. On the other side of things, the Jarvan will be locked in so oh and there's the uh, orn that you were considering earlier looking like that might be the choice as well taken away by ascension so they have just an incredible amount of frontline an incredible amount of engage some really terrifying team fighting possibilities and uh it looks like that will be what decides this game uh if i had to guess chaos is going to be those team fights absolutely and right now you have a fair a fairly good mix of damage on the side of ascension i would say they have a lower amount of ad coming through uh i mean i guess it depends on what the j4 builds if you don't really want to play for that tanky or the ad hmm. bruiser style um i will so, ask what uh, that last pick is yeah not sure what happened there it looks like the side of fallen ran out of time to draft their last pick Callista. 
Callista top lane into the Orn. Uh, okay. Oh my goodness. Doesn't get any more spicy than that, Chaos. Callista top. Uh, it's not going to be the first time we've seen it. You know, even some some pretty famous players from uh, across the world have picked up the Callista top in the past. Uh, you know, I'm thinking about the Shy. I feel like uh, Wonder may have pulled it out uh, once or twice as well. I'm not as sure about that one, but uh, definitely something that's been sort of present on the very fringes of the meta uh, for Absolutely. a little while now. So with that in mind, uh, I think you have to probably go for like the Radiant Virtue Karma and try to go for a tankier version of Karma to help set up for a front line. But I, I think for, for the side of Fallen, I, obviously you put the Black Spear on the Mumu, but can you even handle the, the team fight from Ascension? Like, ah, th this seems like that, that'd be quite difficult. Seems scary, yeah. Amumu is your only frontliner into all of this engage, all of this CC. I think it's going to be tough. I think Fallen kind of have to find a lead. They either have to find a lead or they have to play out these fights so patiently in a way that they somehow don't get engaged on. And then they just land a bunch of poke with Ezreal Victor. But, like, that seems really difficult, and you're just going to basically be ceding control over whatever whatever area you're fighting over while you try and land this poke. So, yeah, I, I don't know. It se seems scary from Fallen. I think Callista, this R5 Callista pick, is going to have to kind of take the game into her own hands if it's going to be successful. Absolutely. And, and to kind of further the point, it's going to be hard to play, like, kind of play for, like, disengage for some of these fights because you have Hawkeye. You're, that's going to be kind of showing your hand a little bit vision-wise where you're going to be going, what you want to exactly do. But you have the Enchanted Crystal Arrow coming in from Ash, and I, you have the uh, Sun's Zenith coming in from Leona. That's going to be at... You can grab people from very far away and you just instantly jump on that uh, with the uh, flag jump with J4. So... This is definitely going to be quite scary for them. Yeah, I mean, it's just an insane amount of CC. Literally every champion on the side of Mythic Ascension has some kind of CC. Like, Syndra's the scatter, Ash has the ultimate, yeah. uh, and then the rest of them, I think, need no introduction. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's just so many threats that the side of Fallen are going to have to contend with. And, you know, while Ezreal can be slippery, you know, he has the Arcane Shift, you have Victor the gravity field for zoning like a little bit of movement speed but like i don't know if it's gonna be enough I don't come back yeah i there is the only point and click cc they do have on the side of fallen is the cataclysm but that that's not hard cc that's like i i, I would consider that kind of soft cc um sure. okay against victor very strong against karma very yeah. strong but you have the arcane shift and then you have the uh Callista the rend leaps Callista. with yeah, yeah i'd say the rend leaps with uh Callista. well not the rend but um she's just she just jumps around a lot oh yeah the the, the poise uh, the martial, martial poise. poise there you go yeah. there it is yeah I'm like with the martial poise hops she's just gonna be able to get over it obviously a mumu you can grab him but eh, i don't know if that's your optimal choice <laughs> that's the one choice that you you don't want to make <laughs> you're Jarvin. Yeah. Anybody but the mummy. I think, uh, just like a, sm a slight side tangent, I think one of the saddest choices you have to make as J4 is sometimes you have to cataclysm the Olaf, and now you're just trapped in with the angry barbarian, but you get him away from the team. Well, you can go for the, the REQ, where you put the Olaf in the baby cage, and then you just kind of vault yourself out of there, and then he's yes. just running around in circles by himself. Uh, that's kind of the ideal. <laughs> you're in timeout, young man. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah put the the angry uh axe child in in a timeout so, uh, <laughs> this is, is what the Jarvan is looking to do but not something we need to concern ourselves with this Absolutely game not. as yes. olaf is not currently going to be on the rift for game one um but it, it is you know worth talking i think a little bit more about this top lane because the the yes. Callista r5 pick it's obviously very a very bold choice um, it's not something that we were expecting. I imagine it's not something that Mythic Ascension was expecting either. Um, but it should, in theory, in isolation, be pretty good against the Orn, right? Because he's very slow. You know, it's his. He does have CC, but it's it's very telegraphed. You know, it's pretty easy to see that coming when he's winding up when he tosses out his little pillar. 
They're like, okay, here he comes. He's going to headbutt his pillar and try to knock me up. Um, and Callista should be very, very good at dodging that. And also um, has the tank shredding capabilities that could allow her to punish Orn very, very heavily if she does get ahead. Uh, but we also, uh, of course, Chaos, have to bring the junglers into this conversation. Because whenever we see a marksman champion in the top lane, uh, you, we, you know, we all know what to expect. That champion wants to play aggressively. They want to push the lane. They want to harass their opponents. They want to get a huge CS lead and possibly some turret plates. And when you're playing against a Jarvan the fourth on the enemy team, and and you're trying to constantly push the lane, uh, I, you know, Amumu is going to have to be there the whole time. Like he actually just can't leave top lane. What does it mean? Yeah. Chaos? So, I uh, early on J four can just find a lot of value into a. Uh, into most of these lanes has an easier time getting into the mid lane because you can uh unseen gr just uh flag queue over the wall at any point you can go top lane quite consistently you can kind of weave, uh, weave your way through the jungle in, uh, in ways that amumu can't amumu has to bandage toss and grab onto like units and if you're mm -hmm. unable to do so then you have just a little bit more time spent moving around the map Whereas J4 can kind of cut down like five seconds here, there, where then he can just use the flag grab. And so J4 can create a lot of early tempo. And depending on what build the Amumu goes, if the Amumu wants to go for more of that, uh, the demonic embrace uh, rush, it, it's pretty strong. However, it's been kind of nerfed in its in its own ways. So not as strong. But, I mean, obviously Amumu skills later into the game, but I think he, as you said before, he'll have to play around the Callista because if they put the if she puts the black spear on him, which I I'm assuming, but I uh, can't guarantee she does. She can then play for possibly getting the extra uh, sentinel damage, because obviously Callista auto attacking she does a lot of AD damage. But then if you have Mumu around, you're able to get that extra max um, magical damage with that. So I think that could be a strong potential pickup on Orn, but that's going to be very hard getting that pickup if you're pushing with Callista. So she's going to have to be very smart on how she kind of passes these spears around and uses the rend and, and to not just shove, uh, like constantly shove the lane. Yeah, definitely going to be an exciting lane to watch for sure. But one more question before we go to break chaos. We see the compositions. We know the stakes. We know these teams. Do you think one of them has found an advantage in the drafting phase? Do you have a prediction for game one of this upper bracket matchup? Um, I, I would have to give the draft advantage to Ascension here. I think J4 is going to allow a lot of these lanes to scale very effectively here. Yeah, How about I think their, uh, their composition is much more straightforward. Mythic Fallen going for something a little bit more unorthodox, but when you're the eighth seeded team, maybe that is what's necessary. We'll see if they can pull it off, guys. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back for the Style Season 14 playoffs right after this.
Hello, ladies and gents. Welcome to Summoner's Rift Indeed, as Mythic Ascension from the blue side look to take down their sister team, Mythic Fallen, on the red. Four versus eight. Very exciting bracket that we have here in the Demacia Division, and uh, a little bit of a less exciting level one chaos. <laughs> Fair enough. Right now, we're going to be kind of seeing uh, with kind of seeing some more just standard things across the board uh kind of keystone wise i think the only notable thing would maybe be the summoners right now we have uh a simerald with and cleanse on the ezreal so definitely just wanting to have double client not wanting the one cleanse and one buffer coming out from him so he can get away from a lot of that cc and cheesy on the top side is going to be grabbing exhaust wanting to really Possibly go for the kill onto Orin here. Going to be starting with brown boots, four pots. So might be autoing Orin a lot and going to be taking a lot of damage from the minion wave. But if she can pick up that kill, she can put her uh, put herself in a really good situation here. Definitely. I mean, we've talked about it uh, already. That's how Cheesy Sammy is going to need to play this pick. He needs to play it aggressively uh, for it to have the desired effect in this composition. But that could put him in danger. We have Jarvan starting on the top side of the map, interestingly. So uh, we'll have to see if this means that the Jarvan is going to be pathing down towards the bottom side. Or maybe he's going to go for the top side clear into an early gank towards that Kalista. It's a Mumu starting on the bottom side. So crew most likely looking for a full clear. Yeah, right now, J4, since he went uh, blue Gromp Wolves, he's most likely going to be headed to the bottom. If you wanted to go for a potential gank on the top side, you want to go kind of blue Wolves into a Gromp, and then you can start uh, pathing that way. Yeah, yeah. You save yourself about a few seconds on that, but it seems we're just going to be seeing full clears across the board. Doesn't appear to be the case, and it, it, this does feel uh, not as good for Jarvan as it does for the Amumu. Uh, Jarvan, of course, one of the champions in League of Legends, where one of his greatest strengths is the very early game, where he needs to really find that early impact. You know, the flag and drag combo has been notorious for how many years now? Uh, it's just, uh, you know, how, how the champion finds the most success. So looking to see when Brecken becomes active on the map, what they decide to look for as their first attempted play. It's uh, still just clear in the camps for now, falling a little bit behind the Mumu even, as the Mumu is already a camp ahead. So right now, Brecken is kind of in a really bad spot altogether because you have Jazz and Baba Yaga just really shoving in both their lanes, so they're it's kind of unable to gank anything, wants to push in, mm. get some vision, but other than that, can't really do much. And as you mentioned, aforementioned, he's going to be behind that camp. Yeah, Krug's still available. Just a trade of Scuttle Crabs for now. And no, none of these lanes, while they are pushing for the side of Ascension, as you just mentioned, uh, none of them are really trading all of that aggressively. We haven't seen too much scuffling just yet. You know, Ezreal Karma, they haven't really been able to land very much of this poke. We just saw another Mantra Q going wide. And, uh, it's going to be Kroom. Just kind of moseys into the mid lane just for a moment. We'll get scattered a little bit. That's okay. He just wanted a friend for a little bit. Yeah, he, and he found one as Kraith does find the knockup and takes a whole bunch of spears in exchange. Right now, I think the only thing that's going to be really helping him in this lane is going to be this Living Forge, being able to possibly build some cloth armors or something to really mm. uh, withstand a lot of this oppressive damage coming through. It's going to be very important for, Kai, uh, for Kraith. Right as you mentioned it, actually, there, Chaos went ahead and picked up his first piece of armor. So feeling decent there. Orn uh, a little, about a, one wave behind in CS right now, but it is, of course, pushing into the Orn. So doing certainly reasonably well uh, So thus far. It's Jarvan again on the top side of the map. Will Brecken go for something this time around? There's a vision in the river, but not in the actual river brush. But Jarvan looks like will not go for anything just yet. Just taking out the ghosty. Just like all the uh, the three uh, three spots of vision in the top river, they definitely want to be able to uh, to track uh, track down Brecken here. But now we do have Dragon that's coming up. You have both the mid and bot lane quite shoved up, but I don't know if they're going to be able to rotate over for a Dragon. Yeah, they're going to be getting a back off. This is looking unlikely from the side of Ascension. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, they their composition does scale very well, right? And, uh, you know, Orn, obviously, the longer the game goes, the happier this guy is going to be. And, uh, you know, once once we get towards those mid-game team fights, the composition fun functions extremely well also. So it's not like they're really on a clock here. You know, I was just looking for Jarn. Okay, hang, hang on now. Kroom looking for something in the mid lane. Really nice scatter. Vantage Frost still connects, though. Brecken going in with the EQ. Can't find the knockup. Jazz forced to flash away from that engage by Kroom. So it will be the Amumu finding a first, the first little advantage in mid lane. So I think right there, that was like a max range bandage toss, able to find able to find Jazz there. So well, well played on Kroom, just knowing that range just very precisely there. Yeah, it was a great scatter, right? But still able to land the bandage toss. Very nicely done. Uh, just going to be the flash for now. It's uh, Jazz still having the teleport available as well. So should be able to reset and get back to lane with a full HP bar. Dragon's still available. Nobody wanting to move towards it just yet. Brecken now in the bottom lane, looking for a potential lane game. One thing I am surprised to see out of Kraith here is going for the Bramble Vest over maybe like a Warden's Mail here. Because mm. she doesn't have a lot of sustain in this top side. And I, I, I don't know what healing you're going to be cutting in, throughout this game. Yeah, maybe just feeling like the... Um... He's, he's more likely to go for, for the Thorn Mail than, okay, gets the knock wow. off. All the Forge God comes out. Cheesy Sammy, potentially in trouble. Exhaust comes down to mitigate the damage from the R2. A lot of spears stacked up and Kareem, Kareem excuse me, in the area as well. But Orin just pops the Callista. And now level 5 Amumu is here, but he's going to get knocked up. Mumu doesn't have a great way out of this one. Does still have the flash, but he's going to be very brittle in just a second here. Lands another bandage toss. Great, though. Lands the Q, just needs a little bit more damage, and will get the flash out of the sad mummy. So, the R5 Callista pick, not off to a great start, Chaos. Absolutely not. And I, I guess we did see a fair bit of and conquer, and, uh, Bramble value there. The Conquer coming out from Kroom yeah. gonna be, would be healing him, but with that, uh, and with that Bramble, it does kind of cut down that healing there. But they're able to then pick up the Dragon on the bot side map, so Ascension off to a definitely great start here. Yeah, Orange only down. That first... Go oh, ahead. Sorry, you continue. I was just going to say they're feeling good with the first kill and the first dragon picked up. The Infernal uh, going to feel really good, especially for the Syndra in the mid lane there. A little bit of additional AP. That's it, though. What were you going to say? So I, I was going to say on the top side of the map, Orn, and obviously right now Kliss is going to be shoving in, but he's not down much cs and that kill is just going to be definitely really bringing him back into this lane he's going to be picking up the mm -hmm. bammy center so that's really going to help augment some of his cc under tower and on the sammy's... rest uh what look at what sammy's doing he's just on the rift herald right now he's on spawn jeez oh, oh wow <laughs> yeah we, we, we're just going objectives just left and right here okay i mean yeah. i guess he had the wave pushed in right so it makes sense that the Callista could just move over towards that objective and uh, the rest of the team eventually will move over to actually help out the top laner with this one as well. Pretty easy, secure there, and the first neutrals will be traded. So right now, it looks like they might be throwing it's all the, oh, uh, like into the top lane. It's the goon squad. Will Will Craft be able to spot it? Ooh, that's going to be a nice grab. DJ finds the Zenith Blade, a Cimarold with a very nice buffer on the Arcane Shift. Doesn't have a support in the area right now, obviously, so Ezreal going to have to play extremely carefully. Harold going to get dropped immediately in that top side. Jazz, no teleport available anymore, so no help is coming for Kraythile. Will be at least a couple of plates coming down. Call the Forge God comes out. Gets the knock up. Just going to be the defense of the turret, though. Shelly gets a couple of plates and not much else. It's so right there. I think the note is you're, you're sharing all that gold that you've gained from Shelly, the 350 gold, across three champions. Yeah. So... I, that that sadly is not a great advantage for the side of the uh, for the side of Fallen okay, here. Okay, Arcane Shift forward underneath the turret. Aggressive choice from Simmeral. Don't know if it's going to pay off. Leona takes the aggro for a long time. Baba Yaga takes a couple of shots and is able to walk out. Clean dive from Mythic Ascension. But the flash Ooh. forward now. The be perfect enchanted crystal arrow straight onto the support. Denies the return kill. And it's going to be Brecken with an easy flag and drag away. It's 2-0 on the board. Mythic Ascension. Right now, we're already seeing in this game that we are right, we're more about 1.3k different, 1.2k difference now. 
and it's slowly just from the a these kills and also the cs difference we spent a lot of uh, people on the top side of the map and we've spent a lot of time with karma oh oh the outplay button the unleashed wow. power jazz with the solo kill made it look really easy did i say two zero i meant three zero as Kroom now desperately trying to find something all his friends are dying there's nothing the mummy has been able to really get done besides that flash early on but jazz has it back off cooldown now and the Syndra is becoming a bit of a menace. Wow. Just, I honestly, uh, what do you, what do you play for it? Like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out how do you really bring this back for the side of Fallen. I think that they need to just play for Kroom to scale. I don't know if you can really get a lot of ganks off here effectively at this point. Orin's pretty big. He, he's quite vulnerable in the early game. Doesn't have a lot of his extra stats from the, uh, the uh, Living Forge passive. But Ezreal is kind of getting poked into oblivion. Can't really do too much yet at this point in the game. And it's, obviously, uh, Syndra and, sits too far back. Brecken and Jazz in the top lane right now, just waiting for Callista to come back to lane. Oh, Sandy oh. gets spotted out there by the hawk shot as well. They're just waiting for him. Here they come, the scatter lands. Oh, that was it. That EQ that looked so a little bit rude. silly, but uh, it was, I mean, that was just very... That's so rude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. So at, at this point, it's already feeling a little bit doomed for Mythic Fallen. They do have some scaling. You know, that's that was kind of uh, what you had proposed as maybe a, their their potential game plan at this point was just try and let okay, Jennifer's Lero connects another scatter going to land. Unleash power, not quite off cooldown just yet. Chaos Storm will come out, but DJ is here. Can we get away from the second laser? We have to flash it. Uh, so, but Jazz is able to survive, and Brecken is here. He's gonna flash just for fun just for funsies as he's able to lock easily able to lock down that kill on the enemy mid lane Ooh, uh, yeah they were able to spot Kroom there on the and the or at uh, the scrying lens there so good uh, good awareness and by a dj there kind of spotting out Kroom. but now kind of with a lot of uh resources used they could fight and uh, fight for this vision for this potential dragging coming up here yeah, Jazz, uh, extremely low HP and is worried about getting chased down by the Amumu. So retreating very, very far to take the recall, which I do appreciate. Making sure that you're safe before you go for that one. Very important. As, uh, as you say, this will create time for Mythic Fallen to start up the objective. So Chem Drake is the target. Looking like they should be able to lock this one down with no contest. But Jarvan is over the wall. Could go for an EQ steal if he wants to. No vision in the pit to speak of. Going to blast going over the wall. Uh, so it doesn't really cost anything for to Brecken to go for that. Not quite able to get it. So that will be the first neutral, first anything really of the game for Mythic Fallen. As that uh, that will deny the perfect game possibility. Collection of the Chem Drake. But there goes oh. the first turret in the top lane. Oh, Cheesy Sammy just couldn't even walk up to defend it. Right now, um... I, I, I think that's really good for the side of uh, Fallen to be able to get uh, this, chem, this chem tech drag. Them being able to just kind of draw out some of these fights, kind of rely on more of Karma's shields and just increasing that value from that, I think is going to be an important thing for them. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's you right now, Verdon. Yeah, that's, yeah. I'm, that's I'm, what I'm, you sound like. Hey, right hey, I'm, try, I'm trying to, like... <laughs> I can't just I, I can't just like say that they're a hundred percent gonna lose. Like you got you got to give them a chance a little bit. Like yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's obviously still a chance for them to come back, right? That's one of the beautiful things about League of Legends. That's why we all tolerate this game is because there's always a chance. You know, the enemy yes. team can always make a mistake. There's always a way for you to come back, especially with the current iteration of the game with uh, you know shutdowns, comeback, gold bounties, all of this stuff. It's always possible but uh i think we do also chaos have to be a little bit realistic here um yeah. and if we're being real the papa is in a lot of trouble right now the only power oh. comes out and he just gets absolutely deleted under the tier one turret crate no maybe in a little bit of trouble now does still have the flash so i don't know how much trouble he's really in who <laughs> Call an ambulance, but not for me, says Great Hile as Jarvan goes in with the Cataclysm. <laughs> Enchanted Crystal Arrow connects as well from the city. And Sammy on the chase, not going to be able to find anything. A two-for-one fight for Mythic Ascension in the topside jungle. So right, th uh, right there, the only uh, shutdown they're able to get was onto Breck in there and able to throw that money onto Cheesy. He is now, uh, he did have work in that last fight, but 
right now with only 150 gold shut down, that's not a lot of money to be throwing on her. And Jazz continue, continuing to live over and over in a lot of these. Oh, we're getting some action here. in the bot lane now. Uh, Baba Yaga could be in a little bit of trouble here, but does still have the Ash on the Flash. Ash, I think, will have the Flash. We'll do it just in time to dodge the Mantra Q. And Karma will be forced to back away. So, a cheeky little roam down there from Sammy, but not really able to accomplish much with it, unfortunately. As uh, Kraith is just uh, becoming a raid boss in the top lane. I mean, Kroom can try and clear out this minion wave, but not really going to be able to do much else as Brecken looks to secure the second Rift Herald. Yeah, he already has the Sunfire Aegis. He already has a fair bit of the components for, I'm assuming, was going to be the Jack Show or the Radiant Virtue. And I, I think he might go Radiant Virtue to kind of soak up some of the damage that they would take from the poke in some of these fights. But I, I think both these are just going to be a death sentence for the side of... Oh, my Ooh. goodness, Jazz. Don't do him like that, Jazz. As the Zenith oh, is going to connect, no. he's going to do him like that. He's doing him like that, Chaos. One more spear. There goes the jungler. And now Brecken, Rift Herald in tow. EQing he just wanted a friend. <laughs> yeah. That's all yeah, he, he wanted. Did. One friend. He wanted a friend. Jazz was not his friend. I Yeah, he flashed and just deleted a child. How do you feel about yourself right now? Is a Mumu a child? I mean, he's uh, a Yordle, definitely. Um, is he Yordle? I thought he was a kid. I, I thought he's definitely a kid. I mean, really? Oh, I thought he... Oh. I guess I'm not the most... Well okay, hang on now. Let's just get a flash over the wall. We'll get back to this conversation in a second. As Brecken is going for a little bit of a turret dive, he's taking way too many turret shots, and Sammy's going to pick up his second kill of the game. Uh -oh. Carl the Forge God will have to be utilized. Another uh, Rand was incoming there. It was imminent, and just barely. Great I will not go down to the Callista, but he will go down to the Amumu, and now DJ is going to get picked up for a double kill. A uh, little bit of a... Way too aggressive of a dive there, actually, from Mythic Ascension giving over several kills back to their opponents. So definitely a little bit of an int going into that tower. Uh, they th they threw a lot of gold back at them, but they still have a 5k gold lead. Like that That's how yeah. dominant the earlier portion of this game has been for them. So I, I doubt they can still contest Dragon because now they're all just going to be collapsing towards it. Orin's going to be coming back up. He, he doesn't have TP. He doesn't have R up. But Orin still can provide a lot of value in this team fight. He definitely can. Uh, he's extremely tanky already. Only one level away from uh, giving himself... Well, I guess he has to complete the Mythic item first. But once he has the item and he gets that next level, uh, he's going to be virtually unkillable. Uh, or at least it's going to take an extremely long time. Is that is going to be an arrow connecting? The Solar Flare follow-up. DJ going straight in. But they don't have the carries in position to follow up. Ash and Syntra both not here at the start of this fight. Wraith is going to charge in, but rapidly running out of HP. Jarvan now in with the EQ, able to finish off the mid laner, and now Jazz is here. Can he salvage this one? The outplay button onto Sammy, not enough to secure the kill. And now Baba Yaga is going to get finished off by this Amumu. It's three for one at the start of this. Mythic falling on top as Asiento on the Karma, barely able to stay alive. Kroom able to live for so long, gets another kill as both junglers have dropped. Mythic fallen win another fight. Yeah, that's another that like this lead is starting to close. I mean, they spent a lot of that stuff on that earlier tower dive. They spent a lot of sums trying to go for some of those cheeky kills, but now Kroom is definitely back into this game. He has the Jack Show. He's quite tanky. We'll be going down eventually, okay. but Jazz is still full HP, def desperately trying to make something happen here. Uh, is very threatening. Has the Ludens completed on the Syndra. Doesn't have the ultimate backup cooldown yet, though. DJ trying to collapse Ooh. from the side. Gets the scatter over the wall. One more spear might do it, but doesn't quite have it available. Simmerald lucky to be alive there. And Jazz single-handedly able to push Mythic Fallen off the objective. Able to buy that time for uh, DJ to get back in there and help him out in that fight. But nice job, Jazz, on holding it down and... Didn't even have to use TP for that. Was just able to just play from a really good flank there. Yeah, just played it out calmly. Uh, able to avoid any CC and just landed the scatter, landed the skill shots. And uh, Mythic Fallen were under too much threat. They couldn't continue to tank the dragon while Syndra is just throwing things at them. Throwing balls at them, as, as it were. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's... I. I Kind of predicted at the start of this one that mid lane was going to be the lane to watch. And so far, 
It's Jazz with a much higher impact. But Mythic Fallen have fought back very strong. They've got some money now on their Ezreal. He's closing in on the Muramana, which will immediately become uh, upgraded as soon as he completes it. Already max stacks on the tier. So I think important things to look at is, A, they just got Cloud Dragon, which gives slow resistance. And all the rest of these dragons are going to be Cloud Dragons. And a lot of the side of Fallen is relying on slows. Like you have Car. Yeah. Oh, oh, we're dear. getting right Rune in the action. Is very much caught out. He doesn't have any friends in the area. There are only enemies as the Crystal Arrow comes out for the lockdown. Oh, but Sammy there with the Fates call brings the jungler to safety. Call of the Forge God comes out, but no follow up is available. And uh, Crew makes it out of there thanks to his top laner. I, I'm, I'm, I just uh, quickly continue playing, but right now it looks like they might be going for Bear and look, but. You have Cheesy with Bork. You have Papoose with... Oh, wow. Uh, Jazz almost just instantly deleting Papoose there on the bot side of the map. Almost, wow. yeah. Just a little bit more AP. A couple more stacks on that ring, and he would have had the kill for sure. Yeah, just a lot of their poke is based on slows, and they'll be able to get away from it. And Orn already now has his ornament coming out, and he's going to be level 14 soon enough. He's going to be starting to give out some of these and just getting tankier. He has two completed items at the 20-minute mark, has components for another... This is just looking to be a slight bit of a nightmare scenario for Fallen. Yeah, I still, game still feels uh, really difficult for them. Definitely, I do agree. I, I, I think it is, uh, you know, a lot uh, that of it comes does come down rather to the draft. You know, if we think back to that dragon fight where Jazz was able to push them off, you know, if they had drafted a little bit more engaged for themselves, they could have jumped on that Syndra, taken her out, and then gone back to the objective. But it just wasn't really an option for them. Uh, and, and Jazz was able to sidestep, you know, and, and sort of play around all these slows that you were talking about and was was able to kind of uh, outplay them by himself. So now, kind of looking at the side of uh, Fallen, they're going to be going for a, a Triforce pickup onto Sammy. So they might be possibly looking for a split push coming out from, uh, from him, trying to maybe say that hey we're gonna have to give up objectives and give up these team fights in these areas but then we could possibly have Callista just jumping around throwing spears into a tower maybe uh, find some value somewhere else with global gold yeah mm -hmm. definitely i mean i think that would make the most sense what it does feel kind of bad though because if you have Callista just in a side lane all the time then you're not really getting any value out of the ultimate yeah uh, if you're not around your junglers so uh, that, you know, may not feel the greatest, but if you just try and team fight against this insane composition from Mythic Ascension, you know, that doesn't really seem like a great plan either. I mean, they've been able to win the last couple of team fights mostly due to Mythic Ascension misplaying and, and not being really together as a team. Uh, but I don't know if you can really bet on that consistently. Yeah, eventually you're just going to have a bad enchanted crystal arrow coming in from downtown, hitting you, and you can't can't do much i mean outside of ezreal having cleanse obviously but if you grab uh asin or you grab papoose that they're in trouble yep, definitely the case we have our fourth dragon second cloud dragon in just under a minute would be cloud soul point for the side of ascension if they can pick this one up do you think it's important for the side of mythic fallen that they can test this dragon or do you think they'd be okay to let it go i think I think they might have to let this go. I think they need to play for like some other objective. I think that maybe trying to uh, push through possible mid, uh, like maybe give up the dragon and try to like sneak a baron or tr mm. trying to find, uh, like trying to find it on the anywhere else than where, where uh, Ascension is going. Because I don't think you cannot beat them in a 1v1. Or a 5v5, you mean? Uh, yeah, yeah uh, yes. Sorry, one v one team lines. But... Is going to find an ash, uh, face checking a bush, and we'll get the summoner spell as a reward for that discovery. So uh, Orn is making his way down towards the bot side river. A couple seconds left on the objective, and we do see Kraith Hyle taking up position in the mid lane. Papa going to move back over to contest the wave, as uh, the side of Mythic Ascension are actually very split here. We have. Uh, Three of the members push towards the bot lane, and Baba Yaga and Kraythile up here towards the top. Mythic Fallen still grouped up together, not willing to start up the dragon just yet, though. It's Sammy 
on the blue buff. I guess just hopping around a little bit, just waiting for his opportunity. He's moving on to the Gromp now. Uh, and the side of Mythic Fall, and they're just going to get pushed out of the river. Um, as a scatter over the wall, not quite going to land. Scuttle Crab Vision doing a lot of work here right now, actually, for Mythic Fallen. Right now, Ooh, we have the ornament coming back. out. We have Ivan Luden on Jazz. We could see some big yeah. damage here. Got to watch the Syndra in this fight. If Jazz lands a big scatter, that could define the entire engagement. As Swordflare comes out, good buff on the Arcane Shift. Kazan goes in, Call of Forge got over the top. There's all of the engage coming out all at once for Mythic Ascension, but it's Jarvan who goes down first. It's Kroom with a massive Amumu ultimate, and it's a triple kill for the sad mummy. He gets pulled back wow. by Sammy, now he's still alive. It's the clean ace for Mythic Fallen. They wipe the floor with Ascension, and they take the first Cloud Drake of their own. Absolutely amazing. They could rotate this instantly right into a Baron, and they're 100% back into this game. Well played by them. Able to just play back far enough, and Kroom just not dying. Unkillable throughout that fight. Just barely staying alive. Really just being helped out by, by Ace in there, keeping him alive. Unbelievable. The sad, mo uh, the sad mummy found friends. Mythic Fallen. We just said it so many times. We were so confident in our assessment of these compositions that the side of Mythic Ascension had the superior team fighting comp. But Mythic Fallen say, no, we have the Amumu and that is all that we need. Kroom absolutely playing that fight so well, just pushing, like keeping, holding back the entirety of Mythic Ascension and allowing his Ezreal and Victor to get out the damage. So we saw a 6k gold difference, I, I believe, I honestly, at this point, about 10 minutes ago, and now we're back at even game state. We have a we have a slight advantage on the side of um, Mythic Ascension, but it's very, very small here. Yeah, I, the advantage is gone. And now Callista can absolutely be that side lane threat with Baron Buff. Would not if she said, as there comes the engage from DJ, the Unleashed Power comes out, the Solar Flare as well. Sammy, in a lot of trouble, doesn't have any help coming. Amumu is not here. Kroom had just completed the recall. And there goes the Baron Buff for Callista. Jazz just could slam all this damage into him. Has Eye of Luden at this point is very, very close to the third item under the 30 minute mark. So it's just going to be continuously chunk out a lot of this damage, but Kraith might be caught out here. Yeah, it's going to be Kroon landing a bandage over the wall. Call of the Forge God comes out. Knock up onto Papa is good. Gets another Brittle proc. Lands it again. Gets the knock up. Another Brittle proc. Not enough. It's going to be Victor with too much damage at this point in the game. And Orn, honestly, not with that much magic resist. So the Chaos Storm burns him down. And it's going to be both top laners in the Death Chamber for a little while. As you kind of mentioned, he does not have a lot of MR at this point. Right now, he's going to be picking up the Null Mantle. But from here on out, I think he really, really has to kind of play for that point because your biggest players on the side of and Fallen at this point in time, I think, has to be Kroom, who is just going to burn through you, with, especially with the Abyssal Mask, yeah. who's going to be getting the pickup in the mid lane. Baba Yaga is in trouble. Yeah, he is. It's going to be Kroom. Oh, my goodness. What was that damage? A Mystic Shot coming through with the Amumu Ultimate, and the Ooh. bottom lane just gets wiped out in mid lane. Mythic Fallen. Looking really good now in this one. Baron Buff still on all four of these members as they push down mid. All right, I misspoke. Okay, Simrald is is now going to be definitely putting in a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, he hit the spike, right? That's Ezreal with two items plus the last Whisper. He's going to be doing some damage, especially to these tankier members, these frontliners. Has a great build for chipping away at this Jarvan, this Leona. So right now on the side of Fallen, they're going to be picking up a lot of this global gold. They got the two mid towers. They got the top tower. And only a return from Ascension is the bot tower, the bot T2. But Jazz trying to get some damage in. Good scatter. Ooh. That's going to be the deletion on the support. As the Crystal Arrow is going to connect as well. It's going to be a couple turret shots now going down. I think that's the oh. victor. Oh, it's the Callista who was stunned up in front of the turret. Sammy getting caught out once again there. Kroom going to get hit, hit by the scatter. It's DJ flashing forward, looking for the stun. Kroom flashing away, trying to stay alive. Ezreal off on the flank. Jarvan giving chase. A couple of kills traded back over to Ascension now. As the flash for the scatter connects onto both of them. As that should be enough damage now to finish off the victor. He goes down. Orn picking up the shutdown on that one. Jazz trying to sidestep, trying to get away from the sad mummy. Will be able to 
numbers advantage. Absolutely massive for Ascension wow. in the top lane as they come back strong. True Shot Barrage gets one back for Simerald. Honestly, the the time that Kroom lived there in that fight is truly astounding. The Conquer really going to work there. Jack showed put in good work and Abyssal Mask kind of unmaking a lot of health and healing him up a lot there. But he's yeah. going to be falling down to just four people just absolutely swarming him. Yeah, I mean, uh, doesn't when you're when you're all alone like that in the middle of the entire enemy team, yeah, you can survive for a while as the Amumu, but it's just not really going to lead to anything, unfortunately. As uh, our Cloud Soul point for either team going to be spawning onto the Rift very, very soon. And this time around, it's anybody's fight. So right now we're going to be seeing the components for a Force of Nature coming in from Orn. But now he's giving out more of these ornaments. He's going to be giving over the Ceaseless Hunger to Brecken. We aren't going to be seeing Kraken Slayer upgraded yet for Baba Yaga. All right, objective already started up. Baba Yaga just laying into this one with the arrows. Brecken and Kraythal on zone control duty. Call of the Forge God comes out. They're just looking to burn it down. But Kroom, he's getting into the pit. But the smite is good. It's good from Brecken. He secures the cloud. So point now Syndra with a big scatter. But going to be able to get the first kill. The unleashed power over the wall finishes off Simerald. And this time around, it is Mythic Ascension coming out on top in the fight. Kroom wasn't playing for the fight this time. He was playing for oh. the steal. He wasn't able to get it. And now they will lose both Mythic Fallen. Get ace. They lose the objective. And now it's Mythic Ascension back in control. Right, uh, right now, that 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 was that was very close until Jazz just walked up and just said, "Here, hold these balls real quick," and just absolutely deleted Simrold. Yeah. But now that's going to be another ornament coming out, going over to Baba Yaga, and he's just getting tankier, tankier. He sat on the front line there and just was absorbing the damage of about three or four champions from the side of Fallen, and he he just he withstood it. And much as Kroom kind of has throughout this entire game. Definitely. It was smite, smite good from Brecken there, but I think especially big shout outs to Kraythile in that fight. Did such a fantastic job of zoning pretty much everybody away from the pit. Kroom actually was able to get in there. Um, but the way things ended up working out, that actually was perfectly fine for Mythic Ascension, as uh, that meant that he was away from the rest of his team. I, th I think one of the sadder aspects of that fight was uh, he didn't have Curse of the Sad Mummy there it, early on in that fight to possibly help his team, and it came out afterwards. So Kroom wasn't able to help his team as much as he would have wanted there. Uh, I missed that the ultimate actually was on cooldown, but uh, and actually on cooldown right now, but will be available very, very soon. I'm going to have that one back momentarily for Kroom, for the Amumu. Sprecha just trying to clear out some vision. So that's the Zenith Blade connecting. Leona going in. Solar Flare coming out as well to try and stop the follow-up. Kroom back into the enemy back line. Buying a lot of time. Gets pulled back Ooh. now by the Fates call as well. Leona taken out at the start of this fight. Now Kraythile on the front lines. Running out of HP as well. A couple of kills going over to the side of Mythic Fallen just as the Baron comes back onto the map. But look at Jazz. Look at where the Syndra is on the map. Already destroying the base. You don't need a Baron buff if you can take the inhibitors without it. So, funnily enough, uh, towers do not have uh, magic resistance, and when you have a bunch of AP built up, you don't attack with AD anymore. You attack oh with goodness, uh, magic. Oh, Victor had to go golden and flash away from the Syndra to avoid getting taken out in the 1v1. Was she still able to take out a Nexus turret? I think both Nexus turrets survived. Yes. No, one of them did go down. Oh, my this goodness. Is a, I was going to say, she's going to be chucking out of these towers, so she... Really good awareness by Jazz there, just being able to trade back a losing fight into, hey, we got two inhibs and a Nexus Tower. So good awareness by Jazz. Was there even... Jazz literally took out both of those inhibs during the entire Top River fight, right? Like, Sindra yeah. wasn't even there? Like, because I don't think mid inhibitor was down before, was it? Like, that was um, actually... I, I, I don't believe so. Yeah, she didn't even have to use TP, so she just kind of ran in there and just <laughs> went and did That's all that crazy. work. Crazy. Oh my god, okay. Jazz just doing their absolute damnedest to try and stay in control of this game. But a couple of Baron buffs have gone over the way of Mythic Fallen now. It just really doesn't feel like Mythic Ascension is able to get a lock on these team fights. It's uh, Kroom keeps finding these angles, keeps finding the opportunity to go for these critical objectives. 
But with only one inhibitor still standing, it should be fairly straightforward for Mythic Ascension at this point and how they should be playing out the map. I'm not sure. I mean, just trying to match the five man in mid right now, I guess. Well, right now we have the Worm Fallen Sacrifice. We have the uh, the LDR coming in from uh, Baba Yaga. So he might be able to start just melting through Kroom. But we're, I think this game's going to be coming down to this team fight here and seeing how it's played out. This is going to be yes. for some of the marbles here for uh, the potential soul pickup for the side of Ascension. And if they get I ultimate mean... cooldowns on these champions, oof, that's going to be big. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah, it's, it would be ma absolutely massive for them. Um, but if I'm the side of Mythic Ascension, I feel like I'm honestly just okay giving up complete control over this area. Just, like, let them have the dragon. You can end the game. Yeah. Look if at they GS commit top. to the dragon, you just push in and end. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, Jazz is the, uh, up on the top side. Might be looking for the, some of the same tomfoolery of last fight. And that's just Papoose by, by himself against him. So it seems like Mythic Fallen have a read on this possibility now. You can see them retreating back into their own jungle, looking to kind of play a little bit more conservatively, try and deny that wraparound where Mythic uh, Ascension could just make a beeline to the base. Crew moving back into uh -oh, the river uh -oh. now. The Amumu is extremely tanky. Kroom is very threatening right now. Does have Flash and Ult. Could go for it right here. Call the Forge guy going to start things off. It does connect onto the enemy backline. Kroom goes for a defensive curse of the sad moment to try and feel for the rest of the team, but he's running out of HP. It's going to be both turns. No, the face call. It keeps the Amumu alive. He goes back in. He gets the double knockup, but it will be the support going down. The Amumu eventually will fall as well. And Jazz with the teleport in, able to help clean this one up. Only Simmerold, Cheesy Sammy left. Pop up back in the base, trying to defend that last remaining Nexus turret. And there go with the last couple of balls. So Jazz picks up the double. It will be the Cloud Soul coming through from Ascension as well. And they should be able to play pretty convincingly from here. So Baba Yaga has not had this Wormfall and Sacrifice for very long and already has over 2,000 damage coming out from it. So it's just already quite efficient for, and for him in this game. All right, Ooh, uh... see if we can end. We've got 10 seconds on Karma. We've got 20 seconds on Amumu. So Lord Flare comes out. Oh, Victor dies. Yeah. It absolutely is the end. He goes gold and he tries to buy a moment, but no flash means there's no hope for the side of Mythic Fallen in 37 yeah. minutes and 45 seconds oh! with Jazz doing the oh! lion's share of the damage. It oh! will be Mythic Ascension that take game one. Right there at the end. That was so cruel. Just <laughs> You just wanted to live for a little bit more and you just crammed all that damage into her. Yeah, Jazz Quite was like, let me just get one, more, one there. more real quick. Yeah, I mean, that game, I think, was honestly probably closer than we were expecting. Um, Definitely. I, I don't know about you, Chaos. Uh, I saw the Callista R5 pick, and I was like, eh. Um, and to be fair, I, I don't think Sammy really convinced us. He, he saved Kroom a few times. I think that was Callista's most valuable contribution to this game, is, is pressing R on Amumu when he was about to die. But uh, besides that, I think, you know, the Callista top pick wasn't really that impressive. It felt quite lackluster. Um, I, I, I would have to agree. I mean, you did get some Bork procs. She did get, like, a T1 at the mid-game. But, like, other than that, it was, yeah, it was fairly lackluster i think being able to throw crew around and just accrue more value with him <laughs> was nice a one. very good aspect but it, it does not make up for just kind of the pick in general i i, I think they definitely maybe want to workshop that and switch it up for game two yeah i am expecting some changes in the draft possibly a, a blue side selection for the side of mythic fallen uh you know not guaranteed of course but that i would hazard a guess that that may be coming through um you know what Who, who's your who's your player of the game though for game one it was it was a very chaotic oh. battle uh between these two teams and you know some some pretty strong performances uh you know from Kraythile able to hold it down against the Callista top I think worth mentioning but maybe not yes. uh who we would vote for necessarily um okay I I I I honorable mention absolutely does go to Kraith just being able to withstand the early yep. aggro not dying to it and then just playing the slow con but actually just the fight getting great, a though. getting a kill there on onto her early and then that just obviously cuts down her snowball potential and but jazz really just putting in good work throughout the game 
finding a lot of these great angles, looking for some of those side pushes in there. So just overall, very good macro and macro and micro from Jazz throughout that entire game. So I, I would give him the edge. But Kroom for the side of uh, Fallen there did an amazing job. He set up the front line very well by himself. Obviously had a little bit of help from Sammy and Asen, but for the most part, he was putting in a lot of work CC-wise. Yeah, the Amumu almost to turn things around. Definitely won them a couple of fights. Kroom on the Amumu there, but in the end, it was a Mythic Ascension that walked away with the win, and I do think the vote for Jazz makes a lot of sense. The Boom Boom Damage vote, definitely applicable this time around. Uh, and we'll see if Mythic Ascension can continue their momentum and move their way towards that upper bracket semifinal. That is, of course, what is at stake tonight. The winner of this match goes to the upper bracket semi and will guarantee themselves top four in the Demacian division. So we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.
Hello everyone, welcome back to Style Esports. We are just getting ready to get underway with our second draft of the night. We're going to be remaining on the same sides for Game 2 Chaos. So what uh, other adaptations do you think would be good for Fallen to go for in order to make this second game end a little bit differently? So right now in, in this game, I think with the thought that Kroom might be your overall best player, you might want to potentially save a fifth pick for uh, like the counter pick for him instead of maybe uh, saving it for kind of Sammy on the top side. Because if Sammy's going to play some more of these esoteric champions in top side, you could throw at, you, you could put him at just kind of uh, you could put him at the fourth pick and then you could save something just really impactful for Kroom. Or you could potentially be like, hey, sorry, Cheesy, you're going to be on like Orn duty and put that on the at the fourth pick. I, I, I think that you, you might want to put something probably more sturdy on, on Sammy because I, I think they did have a really good core for the rest of their squad. But yeah. um, I think you have to potentially like I know they banned out so many things against Jazz and with him being masters, that's it's hard to really look at here. But I think GP is a good band. That's a very much a win condition. But I think you might have to potentially get rid of Syndra versus some of the other options. I haven't seen him play some of these other ones, but Syndra can yeah. just sit from so far back and just kill you. Well, we know that the Azir is also a threat for sure. So I think keeping that ban uh, makes sense. But the Syndra yeah. has been left open. I believe these are actually the exact same bands as uh, game one. Yes, Correct. indeed, they are. So uh, we'll see if the run back continues, if it's going to be the Leona on B1 for Ascension, or if they want to do something else. I mean, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. I but they're going to be. Agree. That's going to be a TF pickup immediately. So mm. it's going to be a lot of Rome help coming out from the mid lane here. They could potentially stuff a lot of ganks into the bot lane or obviously into top, but most likely bot to get your just AD scaling. But definitely, I haven't uh, seen Twisted much. Yeah, it def definitely a very different look for Jazz this time around. And TF, as you were just saying, not really a super common pick these days. You know, even in uh, just random solo queue, you know, it's, it's not something that uh, really sees all that much play at the moment. So very interesting to see it prioritized so highly by Jazz. Maybe uh, he just has some kind of read on his opponent's. Um, that leads him to believe that this is going to be a really powerful pick. You know, he obviously does probably know this team pretty well, given that they are both part of the Mythic organization. So uh, maybe it's, a, it's sort of like a situational preemptive counter pick here or something like this. But on the side of Fallen, things looking much more meta as they're going to go for the Zeri Lulu in the bot lane. Absolutely. That, that, is, a pa that is a match made in heaven. Both of those uh, champions really work out well together. And Lulu's just able to really, really help Zeri just get uh, weave her way in and out of some of these situations. But that's going to be a Shen pick on Ascension. So right now, they're they're absolutely looking to play for a bot lane or a carry jungler, one of the two. It's like global but, comp. Yeah, I was going to say, you have a lot of global lockdown coming oh. in, and that's going to be Nocturne. Oh, I actually really like oh. this. If, if Mythic Ascension can pilot this well, and show that uh, that they're comfortable playing this kind of composition, that is going to be such a boon to them going forward for the rest of the playoffs. Because it means that it, your their opponents are going to have to be constantly second-guessing and, and wondering what kind of strategy that Ascension is going to be bringing out in any given game. So uh, it is a very different type of draft than what we saw them pick in game number one, but... If it works, then it's going to be very impressive, and it's going to make them a huge threat for potentially taking the whole thing. So a little bit of a meme, but imagine a Kennen support. You shut off the lights, and then you have the Kennen jump in. You have a Shen help them. Yeah, and you just yeah. pile drive all of these. <laughs> Slight <laughs> problem though, uh, chaos. Uh, Kennen Kennen's ultimate is not global. That, yeah. I mean, okay. That's besides fair, that's that, fair. it seems pretty good. But like that's that would be the only issue that I see there. Uh, but right, we'll so see. It'd, it'd be a bad flavor gaff on their behalf then. Okay. 
you know, it's not up to us, thankfully, uh, what they actually are going to draft. <laughs> um, so we'll just have to wait and see. But it is going to be the Silas over on the other side of things for Papa this time around. So uh, um, the mid laner for Fallen also going to be on a very different kind of champion. It could also be Silas in the jungle. Silas in the jungle oh, you're is right. still quite yeah. effective. And right now, this might give Kroom a little bit more agency to possibly frag out make some of these plays but silas has some definitely very good ultimates to steal at this point uh stan united is obviously a very good one twisted fates i'm forgetting his r right now but a global teleport Best on or well, a half global teleport on silas turns out pretty good yeah yeah it's uh silas has been a, a pretty standard counter pick into the twisted fate and pro play for a very long time we haven't seen it as much recently because we haven't seen very much twisted fate recently but um Silas, historically, been pretty good into the Master of Cards. And we'll see if it ends up working out for Papa this time around. Papa, not really uh, winning out in the landing phase against Chaz in game number one. So, uh, is going to need to have a better performance this time around individually to make this counter pick work. So, right now, from the side of Fallen, they're trying to get rid of some of these ADCs, really trying to hinder Baba Yaga as much as possible. And that's going to be Silas mid confirmed, and that's going to be Kroom on Zach out of the jungle. So, Zach and Kroom is again going to be in, in playing engage and playing this tank. And I, I hope to see kind of uh, some of this. I, I say I think he's going to be really important for peel or counter jungling here. Uh, sorry, counter ganking here. So, I, I think Zach is definitely a very good pickup from the side of Fallen. I agree. I like the Zack a lot. Uh, being able to create chaos in team fights is really exactly where Zeri and Silas want to be. And uh, Leona has dropped very far down through the draft, but it's still available. So that's just going to be a very comfy lock-in for the side of DJ. Going to be on that one once again for the second game in a row. And now all that's left is the Marksman. Uh, we don't see Marksman saved for last pick very often these days, Chaos. But here we are. And uh, the pool only been very slightly pinched just the kaisa and the zaya have been taken away so some good options still available that can be paired alongside the leona i'm thinking samira could be good ooh. but ooh, interesting choice there the vein so a hyperscaling pick down in the bot lane could be good into the zack but uh what do you think about that vein lock in there chaos so right now i think that vein has a lot of a lot of components on her team to help her out to uh, in some instances however she does not have an enchanter so she's definitely going to yeah. have to outplay them very <laughs> very effectively here and that's going to be i'm guessing a yasuo okay. top yeah it's going to be yasuo top yeah. <laughs> we saw the Callista last game and sammy true to Sammy's his name mid laner yeah going straight back to the cheese it's it's only cheese for this guy that's the only thing he plays apparently uh, and we're going to see what variety of cheese we've got this time around. Because the Callista, I would say, it was mm, very much akin to maybe something like a, like moldy mozzarella. Uh, <laughs> like, really not very desirable. You know, you don't really want to use that uh, for anything, generally speaking. Um, maybe I'm being a little bit too harsh on him, but... Uh, the Yasuo seems like a, another very aggressive pick after the last aggressive pick did not find very much success. As a as a native Wisconsinite, I think I can agree with uh, Moldy Mozzarella. You like, back me up on this? Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I think I think I could say that. And I think uh, Yasuo is going to have a bit of a hard time into Shen, but we'll have a fair bit of... Uh, we'll have a... Uh, I think a, a fairly better time than against Orin because Calista couldn't really confirm a lot of kills, but... He also might be able to put in a lot of work against Shen, and I think we might see something more akin to like a horseradish Havarti cheese this mm. uh, this time. Well, De definitely perfect. quite tasty. Has a nice punch to it, but nice okay. and smooth at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, if that's what we're going to be seeing, then I'm all I'm on board for that. Um, that sounds pretty tasty. So uh, we'll see what what kind of cheese Sammy has prepared for us this time around. <laughs> Um, this is going to be very, very exciting to watch out for, of course. Um, you know, as you say, has the Zack, has the Silas for a little bit of setup. Um, and, you know, going against this this competition on the side of Ascension, you know, some some decent targets to look for there as well. The Twisted Fate, the Vein, Windwall can, can potentially get some value uh, against any kind of gold cards, you know, if there's a, 
an early play from Jazz towards the top side, definitely. Sammy would have the potential to outplay that. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see. And Zach could also help out as well with the counter ganks, can be really powerful. So I think an important thing to be looking at here is Ascension is very, very early game outside of Vayne. So at, at, yeah. in the in the sense, it's kind of protect the carry, but Vayne definitely has yes. shorter range than most other ADCs yeah. in the game. So she's going to have to be a little bit up, up close and personal. So it's going to be a, kind of a difficult task keeping Baba Yaga alive. But I think you could we could see a possible game where Nocturne might try to push for a vertical jungling strat where then he's playing for the bot side of the map. And he could be easily helped out by TF ulting in, Shen ulting in. Um, but might find himself in a little bit of trouble just because Zeri can hop over the fat walls and help and help out the Zac if he tries to go for that. So I think it's going to be very interesting to see how this jungle evolves throughout the game. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, Nocturne Zac matchup. I actually, generally speaking, do like the Nocturne side of this. You know, you can spell yeah. shield at least some of the CC from the Zac, and you definitely should be able to win out in any kind of 1v1, assuming the two junglers are on even footing, uh, just, you know, in general, in terms of the amount of gold that they have. So uh, I, I think that the Nocturne could get, could feel pretty good in this draft, definitely, although I don't know if he would get a ton of value necessarily out of any vertical jungling that may happen, because the Nocturne, of course, really needs kind of that level six mark before the champion is really online, really becomes a big threat. Aww. And then the other thing to kind of think about is the, the bot lane for Mythic Fallen is obviously the Zeri Lulu, which can be very, very difficult to punish. Yeah. So, uh, you fair. know, you do have the Leona for a little bit of setup. Like, if you can make a dive happen and set the Zeri really far behind, that's obviously would be massive for the side of Ascension. If you can snowball the Vayne to a point where she, you know, gets to that, uh, that two item spike really early on in the game, like that can just be lights out. But it does feel like a much more risky draft this time around for Ascension without, uh, you know, as, as strong of a team fight necessarily. They're really more gonna be looking for picks this time around and trying to transition that into objectives rather than just going for a 5v5. So and for this bot lane, if you were to gank it, I. I don't think you can go for Zeri. Like, yeah, I, I think that's a little bit of a nightmare scenario. Like, it's kind of like last game, where then if um, I'm if uh, Semerald plays with a head on their shoulders, it, like it's going to be very hard for Zeri to die because if if, if Zeri just kind of plays cognizant of the fat wall, she can just dash on over it. Obviously, Vayne can condemn her into the fat wall, so it's going to be a little bit of trying to play that correctly, but. The thing is, if she starts the dash and then still gets condemned into it, it's then going to displace her further, like along uh, along the wall. So it's not going to be right at the point of contact. It's going to be a little bit further into it. So I think that uh, in a lot of these inner, uh, kind of these weirder interactions of the game, that Zeri is still going to be able to get away. So I think Lulu is going to be the primary target for uh, DJ to be trying to engage on to. All right. Yeah, well, we'll see if we find any early action in that bottom lane. You know. Zarian and Vayne, generally speaking, just want to be farming up early to try and get towards oh, yeah. those items. But Leona, you know, can can make things happen, potentially. We'll see if uh, any Lulus overstep or anything like this. Uh, but really, I think, again, the main point of our focus, Chaos, should be the middle part of the map. Jazz, yes. first picking the TF mid on blue side. And Papa with the Silas counter pick. You know, we got to fold the junglers in here as well. We already talked about Nocturne, how he really wants to get to that level six, but Zach can be more active early on. So, how do you expect this mid lane to shake out? So, okay. I, I expect the Silas to want to possibly shove in early and possibly go for a Cheetah Recall or go for a Roam to then try to uh, work with the Zach and get. Uh, possibly Yasuo ahead. Like, I, Silas has a lot of ability kind of early game to clear the wave a little bit faster than Twisted Fate, because once Twisted Fate gets his Lost Chapter, gets the Finish Codex, he's then able to clear wave more effectively. But until that point, Silas is able to do it kind of better than he can. So I think we might be seeing just a lot of roaming coordination with Silas Zack out of this early game, and they might be kind of making Brecken's life a little bit of a nightmare. I like it. I like it. A group up from the mid jungle could be exactly what the side of Mythic Fallen needs. Uh, but one more question before the break chaos. 
Which draft do you like better? What's your prediction for game two? Oh, I think, you know what? I, I think I'm going to give it a little bit to Fallen. They have a okay. lot of airborne procs across the board to kind of work with the Oswo. Zach, I think, is yeah. extremely strong at this point. And I think Zeri has a, a lot of ability to uh, find, find some impact throughout this game. How about All yourself? Right. We shall see. You know, Fallen backs against the wall now. It is double elimination, of course, so a loss here will not end their season. Only send them to the lower bracket. Sammy, a little bit of a rough game one. We'll need to bounce back. We're going to need to see enemy team Yasuo, not our own team's Yasuo, if we're going to go <laughs> to a game three tonight. So don't go anywhere, folks. The continuation of the Mythic Civil War in the Demacian Division after a short break. Welcome back to the Rift, ladies and gentlemen, League of Legends fans of all ages. We are back. Mythic Ascension once again on the blue side with a very different look for game two. Mythic Fallen back on the red side. Once again, stacking this little bush at level one. Seeing if anybody wants to do a little face checking. Chaos, any runes or summoner spells that are worthy of note here before we have any action? Uh, keystones across the board, I think, are fairly... They're fairly regular. I think the only like uh, switch uh, like switch up potential like Jazz had the option of like electrocute or phase rush, but is going to be going for electrocute and ghost here in the mid lane. And then you're going to have Simerald going with uh, and kind of cleanse here. Going to be kind of playing the same thought uh, thought process of last game. Going to be having the dash to get away from some of these shenanigans and have an enchanter. But still, I would like a cleanse to get out of a lot of this uh, DJ's CC and possibly potentially Jazz and the whole rest of the crew coming in. Yeah, 
not even to mention, you know, it's uh, once again sort of a situation where everybody on Mythic Ascension has that potential CC in the kit, as I'm just realizing that my scoreboard is backwards on the stream. Give me a second here. Uh-oh. Let's but see if we can fix that. As of right now, we are going to be probably seeing a Zach gank in, uh, like, in, in the bot lane fairly early on. He went from blue instantly over to wolves, and that's going to most likely rotate down to Grop, or he might be going for a potential speed three from uh, blue wolves into wraps and might be trying to look for a mid play. Yep. Yeah, potentially. Or it could just be the five camp, uh, which is yeah. you know, a little bit less common, but we'll just have to see what the Zach goes for. One of those champions, right, that can go for some very unorthodox sorts of paths. Can uh, gank at some really unexpected times. So, see if Kroom is able to take advantage of that. Nocturne, on the other hand, just wants to clear these camps as quickly and efficiently as possible. Just needs to get to level 6 as soon as physically possible. Also, I didn't keep in mind that uh, it was going to be Papa, actually, in the top lane here, and Cheesy oh. uh, are, are going to be swapping around. So, it's going to be Yas versus TF here in the mid lane. Okay, so... Uh, this does, I think, maybe change things a little bit as uh, neither Papa nor Sammy is really doing great in these trades. Although Sammy a little bit better in the mid lane. Has actually got a Jazz chunked uh -oh. down. Oh, Krum's coming in topside. Here comes the Zach. Yeah, Kraith is going to very nicely flash away. It still gets pulled Woo! back by the stretchy strikes and Papa going to land the chains as well. But it's just not quite enough damage to finish off the Shen this early on. But I think that's very, very big. Shen's Shen one through yeah. five is honestly a very strong champion. So kind of, kind of putting him down or in the early game is going to be strong. But right now, crew might be getting pinched out here. Oh yeah, that's the Zach. Yeah, that's going to be flashing up. him. Absolutely right. Has the strikes. Going to be able to stretch onto the two of them. Papa now here rotating down. Oh, but they already got Zach into the passive. Shen ignite coming out, pushing it back the Silas, and it will be the Zach that gets taken down for first blood. But now Sammy. With the rotation up towards the top side, not quite in time though. And now with TF on the way as well, it's a 3v2 situation in the top lane. And Papa's running very low on mana. Kraith is going to be able to get back into his uh, null zone, but he uh -oh. will eventually go down overall though. A three for one fight as Mythic Ascension pulls ahead early on. Uh, this has gone from bad to ugly here. Right now you have three kills on Brecken. That is a fed Nocturne, and depending on what Nocturne goes here, like if he gets like an early Axiom arc, that is just that is so hard to deal with from the side of Fallen. What's it gonna be, Brecken? He's sitting in base for a while. He's thinking about it. No, oh, not Lethality. He's going for the okay, Stride okay. Breaker. It's okay. There's three melees. I respect it. I respect yeah. it. I wanted the Lethality though. When you get three kills I also before did. five minutes. He could have gone for the the uh the item that you just said. Uh, I just Axiom Mark. Yeah, that one could have gone for that. Yeah, yeah Axiom Mark. Axiom Mark is quite disgusting. A lot of CDR, and then he was so able to possibly Nocturne. just rotate gank after gank through these lanes. Oh, yeah, that would have been immaculate. And with all of this CC on your team too, and with a Shen, could have been pretty good. But I think the Stride Breaker could also work out quite well. You just have to be a little bit concerned, you know. Um, for the damage, honestly, from the side of Mythic Ascension, they they do kind of need to snowball with this comp. Um, they need to, you know, kind of find these picks, find people isolated, and and play things out in that way. Because if it's just a five v five, they are going to be lacking in straight up DPS compared to their opponents. As Sammy Ooh. finds a Q three, finds the tornado, gold card comes out, gets the stun. Jazz taking another little slash from the sword there. And Kroom waiting in the wings on the Zach, looking for an opportunity. But the top laners absolutely continuing to uh, skirmish it out up here. Kraith able to stand strong for the time being. Silas has those kind of mana problems early on that uh, makes it a little tough for him to win out consistently. Oh, Jazz has to be careful here. Forced to flash away from the slingshot. Gets pulled back by the strikes. Sammy, no Ooh. access to the last breath. Just sticking over to six right now. Ooh. Oh, Brecken. How did he even get over there? He, fl uh, he quick flashed and... No, I mean, like, where he flashed from. He was, like, in the enemy raptor camp. Like, when oh, did yeah, he yeah. even get there? Right now, Brecken's just being an absolute menace. Now just going to be taking away a lot of the farm for Kroom. And Kroom's... 
Going to be down quite a few camps. Obviously, uh, many kills at this point. That's a rampage over for Brecken. So Brecken able to just rinse through a lot of these camps with the Iron Spike whip. And hey, they're not even, like the camps aren't even that high of a level. So they're going to be falling very quickly, even despite the 20% damage nerf uh, for kind of invading the jungles. Yeah, it's a Nocturne already with a 20 CS lead in the jungle position. Absolutely huge. Basically, uh, well, I mean, he is single-handedly the gold difference right now. All the other lanes are pretty even. And he has all of the kills. It is this Nocturne is the lead right now for the side of Mythic Ascension. Back to base now. Has the Mercury Treads completed. So going to be able to move around this map a little bit faster. Uh, try and... Reduce a little bit of the damage Ooh. from this Zenith Blade going in. DJ looking for the Lulu. Lulu is the target. You called it out from the draft, and they're <laughs> easily able to execute as oh. Brecken flies in over the top with the paranoia. Ace Asen had no chance. They had no too chance. many people there coming through and just going to be going down, and they're going to be rotating that over to a dragon. However, Sam is going to be shoving in mid lane, going to be getting some of these, some of these tower plates, but the global gold from Dragon is probably going to make up for that plate. Yeah, Ooh. it's uh, it's Papa going for a little bit of a trade, but again, the Silas rapidly running out of that mana bar, and uh, the health trade honestly going pretty even. Minions helping out, but here comes Sammy, gonna make it a one v two, oh, and here comes the Stand United, United as well. Big shield. Oh, well, the sh the flash comes out, but the taunt still land or the knock up rather still lands and they will be able to get the kill and sammy there is that hardy of rt that we were looking for scrim gonna be able to catch the wave in mid as well right now this is gonna shut down and this is gonna shut down kraith for a bit he doesn't have tp to get back into this lane killing him is gonna just slow him down even more honestly i th i i good i good rotation by uh, cheesy just recognizing sure. just uh kraith's abilities here in the top lane yeah and uh I he like that was after that uh Sammy had fully shoved in the mid wave, right? So was yeah. fully aware of the play that was coming out from Mythic Ascension towards the bot side with the dragon take and a great punish to be able to push in the mid wave and then rotate top side, pick up a kill. Well played from the Mythic Fallen mid laner. Now we just need to see if they can keep it going. So right now we're gonna be seeing a possible swap back here. We have Papa here in the mid lane. We'll see where the where Cheesy's gonna be headed up. All right, yeah, it seems that Papa's going to be headed back north, and we're going to be having Aunt Cheesy back in the mid lane. Yeah. Gonna stick with the same lane assignments. So, uh, I guess Silas into Shen sort of functions in a very similar way to Silas into Twisted Fate, right? So the main purpose of, of that counterpick, of the Silas into the TF, is being able to steal the ultimate and match the global pressure. But you can kind of do the exact same thing against the Shen, can't you? Exactly. And right now, Yasuo is going to have a much... Oh, uh-oh. Okay, here uh, comes the slingshot. It's Kraith with no flash. Has the taunt. And will be able to get under the turret. And here comes Nocturne. Now, Brecken is looking for the fight. Has uh, the uh, item not quite complete yet. But don't know if it's going to matter. As Papa's going to dash away and try and stay alive. Broom now on the retreat as well. Zach flashing away. Oh, this Nocturne is just so strong. Though the slingshot is going to come out. It's not Ooh. going to land. But Sammy uh -oh. is here again. The fear will come out. But not in time. It's a huge shutdown. Going over to the Yasuo in the bot side though. Baba Yaga oh. is able to get a kill. Oh, it actually goes over to DJ on the Leona. Now Jazz is here, but a little bit too late. It's going to be Kraith knocked up with the last breath. Sammy coming through. One more dash through. We'll seal the deal. There it is. Sammy on a killing spree with this Yasuo. Enemy team Yasuo indeed. And Mythic Fallen looking like they're primed and ready to strike back in this series. So right now, this might be the kind of light and absolutely the lifeblood they need right now. Yasuo is 4-1, has made a lot of these amazing rotations, and got the 800 gold shutdown on two. At Brecken here, so that's going to be a very big pickup. He has double buff. He's got, he's only, yeah, no, he's at the same level as Jazz right now. So, doing a great job here, and as is at 100 CS. So, a lot of impact from yeah. Sammy here. And the Wind Brothers actually very strong on this patch as well with the buffs to Infinity Edge. 
Uh, Yasuo actually really strong right now, just in general, as Brecken will find a fear. But uh -oh. you actually don't win this anymore, Nocturne. Stand United will come out, but the knockup comes through. Zack is here as well, though, with the slingshot. Kraith gonna find the taunt on it too, but where's the follow up? Where's the damage? Sammy's gonna get ignited. Destiny coming out now. It's going to be the side of Jazz able to join this play. Oh, it's the stolen Destiny. It was Papa's Destiny, as the Silas is the one who joins the mid lane skirmish, and it's the side of the Fallen who pick up another kill. Wow. Papa just picking up all these global ultimates from them and just hijacking them. That has been just a really, really big deciding factor for the side of Fallen. Definitely. It was a it was a good pick and draft, recognizing these global ults. Yeah, I've been playing it out really well. Both of the Fallen solo laners uh, having a great game too here so far. So it's going to be our second dragon in just under a minute. It was, of course, the side of Mythic Ascension that we're able to pick up the first one. And they do have a lot of control right now in bottom lane, at least for the time being. You know, on a little bit of a reset at the moment, but should be able to get back to the lane in time to regain that pressure. So a lot of the tempo that Brecken had going into this really... and. They, they were able to rotate that into a dragon, but from there, they're going to be kind of losing it. They now have Shelly coming in through the top side. Going to be throwing more money onto Papoose. He has the Roa already. He has the slightly magical footwear. And so he's going to definitely have a lot of effect in this game. And Krath has really been kept to a minimum here. Yeah, definitely. This Shen has not been able to find quite the same impact as the Silas, but here comes Jazz now. And it is the real destiny this time around as Silas finds himself in a 1v2. Papa Poo. Trying to outplay this one. The level 9 Silas looks like he might not be able to do Ooh, it. Uh... There comes the last auto, and it's going to be Jazz getting one back in the top side. But this does mean that the uh, second dragon will go over the way of Mythic Fallen. They'll be able to tie up that neutral count at 1-1. One to one. Right now, I think that's that's really big for them, just getting that mountain drag. And now we have Hexgate. Uh, we have Hextech Soul. That's going to be really, really big. I... Honestly, the team that gets Hexex Soul, I think I saw the stat where it, they have a increased chance. I think it's like a 95.7% chance of winning the game from that point on. It's a very, very strong drag, so it'll be important for either team to pick up. Definitely expecting some really intense fighting around these dragons from now on. As here comes Brecken, going to be able to get the fear this time. Yasuo, no mini wave of dash through. Going to be the flash taunt landing. Oh, that's a nice double tornado. There's no way, right? There's no yeah, way he no. gets out. There is the last Dustbringer from Brecken. Going to be able to finish off the Yasuo. As the chains land in the mid lane, Jazz with the gold card. Be able to disengage. So right here, we ha and you have Stridebreaker really showing its value here. Slowing down Cheesy and kind of holding him in that fight longer than he really wanted to be there. And that Immortal Shield Bow and Lifeline proc is unable to save him and get him out of this scenario. But that's going to yeah. be 560 gold shutdown going over to the Nocturne yet again. And he's going to be just picking up more gold. Oh, but he's getting collapsed on here. in trouble now. He has a fear, but Kroom is going to be able to... Oh, the Hex Gates. <laughs> <laughs> Good awareness there on the map. Nice job. Nice job. Nice. Okay. Uh, but it does have to forfeit the red buff. Not going to be able to steal that one away. Actually, they give it over to Sammy. Complete faith in Cheesy to come in with a big turnaround here. And uh, certainly, I think... Strong performance on the Oswo thus far. You know, did go down oh. in that uh, top lane play. Played it out about as well as he could have, I, I believe. As this turret is in a lot of trouble down here, this tier one. Looking like, like it might be the first brick. And indeed, it will be. Ooh. Zenith Blade connects. Lulu in trouble as Baba Yaga pop in the final hour. Here he comes. And there goes the Lulu. Gold card going to come in as Jazz joins the party. Condemned into the wall. Seals the deal. Baba Yaga getting paid. First of the game, actually, for the vein as Papa in the top side. We're going to continue to push in this wave. That top tier one also pretty low. Ooh, jazz! Damn, that was dirty. So important thing to note there, they on the top side, they're trying to go for Kraft, unable to get the pickup, and he was able to get away from that, and they're able to return those kills and the tower on the bot side of the map. So right there is this really good pickup by Ascension here, and right now they're going to be 4K gold ahead, despite Sammy getting a lot of these shutdowns and pickups. It's still looking a little bit dire for the side of Fallen, but now they're looking to possibly go in on Krath again. Looking for a yeah, potential dive got here. A rotation up from Sammy and from Kroom. Last breath available. Kroom just needs to land the knockup, or it could come from Papa as well. Yeah, there he goes, straight into the last breath at Fort Great. Didn't stand a chance there, did he? 
No. Three man push. It's going to be the tier one in top going down. And it's actually uh, the extra turret in favor of the Fallen for the time being. Jazz on the mid tier one, though, looking like the TF may be able to trade that one back. Still about uh, third HP on it. The minion wave is dying out. So it is uh, the side of Mythic Fallen able to close the gold lead uh, just a little bit. Down Honestly, I think. Half K. I think if there's anyone who just kind of lose their lane just very hard on the side of Ascension, I think you want it to be Shen. I, I think that's fine if Shen loses. But I think that Jazz Jazz and Baba Yaga be, and also Brecken to be able to do what they want to do in this game is very good for the side of Ascension. Yeah. So I think it's definitely. okay for them to cram all these ganks top. The side of Kraythile has definitely been targeted pretty severely. Uh, several deaths already on the Shen as Sammy going to dodge away from that Zenith Blade. Here comes the Paranoia aggressively from Brecken. Does get the flash out from the Yasuo. It is going to feel pretty good. It's uh, a big ol' 4v4, or 4v5 actually. It's an man advantage for Fallen, but it doesn't matter. His crew flashes away. Still goes into the passive mode of the turret now, though, as Leona scores with the flash away. Papa trying to turn things around, trying to protect the Bloblets, but it's not going to happen as Baba Yaga is going to pick up the last hit on that one under the turret now, though. It goes the vein. Gets Polymorph. DJ, a little bit too aggressive. Going to give one over. The tier one does eventually fall now, and it's going to be a Brecken on the front line, soaking up a lot of this aggro as Baba Yaga tumbling forward. One more auto cannot quite find it. As oh, Ace and Good shield there at the end. Eat. Yeah, absolutely massive from that Lulu shield keeping the Zeri alive. And just 30 seconds left now on the third Dragon Chaos. That 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 fight was looking a little bit brutal there. They had the one auto on the tower just to needed to take it down, but they weren't able to get that auto out. But really good pickups across the board. But a lot of summers coming through. But it was had going and it was going for Ascension again. Um, kind of they got the advantage. They got the tower. Bobby Ega able to pick up another kill here, but now is going to be having a 350 gold shutdown along with Jazz. Jazz having a lot of fancy feet throughout that uh, that fight, dodging a lot of skill shots coming out. Mm. Yeah, Baba Yaga playing it up pretty well as well, able to keep himself relatively safe on the vein, but like close enough in range to where he's able to get out the damage, right? Able to finish off the Zack, almost able to finish off the Zeri as well, but uh, it's going to be the side of Mythic Fallen that are in position to go for this first hack strike and. If the side of Mythic Ascension don't get a pick, like, right but right as the dragon is alive, then um, they can't really go for the straight-up 5v5, right? Honestly, I, I don't think they can. Kroom is really putting in a lot of work, and if he gets a, a potential double knockup, that's going to be a, a, the last yeah. breath coming in from Cheesy, and he's going to be putting in a lot of damage. Not even to mention the Zeri. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Zeri is 0-2 at this point, but she's still, like, you look at that last fight, she put in a lot of work. She she's has she has Asin putting in and uh, helping her out, augmenting some more of her damage and attack speed. So she put in a lot of work. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, definitely pretty significantly far behind Baba Yaga at the moment. It is actually 2.5k uh, gold in advantage wow. for the Vayne in isolation, which is pretty nutty. But, um... Still, you know, the Zeri will eventually be a huge threat in these fights. It's it's an inevitability. It's only a matter of time. I think, that, Go ahead. I think that this game is going to be just a little bit more difficult for the side of Fallen. They don't have Kroom, like, just kind of turbo-fed as a tank here. So it's going to be a little bit harder for him to get into this front line. Oh, right uh, now we're getting Brecken into this action. Get engaged on. Has the fear, though. We have Sammy in the area, so something could happen here. But Jazz and Brecken just going to back off for now. Sorry to interrupt you there. No, no, it's all good. And we're getting some of this fighting, and it's kind of just going back and forth. A very scrappy game coming up from everybody. But it's going to be really hard for Papoose and Sammy to, like, hold it together to be the front line here for and Esmeralda come, and to Simmeral to get a lot of this damage coming out. Yeah, it has seems it seems like the burden of frontlining has kind of transferred in this one. Like Kroom is really mostly looking for engages, seems to be the, the Zach's main uh -oh. job. Like he can set up the fights, but in terms of actually frontlining, it's Papa and Sammy that need to do the heavy lifting. Is that right now they're all trying to stay together to stay away from this potential destiny, but Jazz looking for something here. Yeah, Kraythile, the only one split off. Has the Stand United available, though. Here comes the Paranoia. Straight onto the back line goes Brecken and Lulu. Going to get taken out by Baba Yaga. A 
couple of quick kills coming through now for Mika Centrum, but Simro gets gold carded on the back line as Jazz flashes into the red buff pit. The Zeri gets taken out, and now it's only Sammy left. He can't do it all by himself. A very, very convincing fight for Mythic Ascension, and they can now turn towards the Baron. And right there, and Simrold almost I almost got away from this, but Jazz flashed over the wall, got that gold card on him. Yeah. And Simrold was trying to flash away from it, but flashed into a fat wall there and wasn't able to really go anywhere and get away from that and get behind the Yasuo that. wind wall. That is tragic for the Zeri and for Mythic Fallen. Uh, that, yeah, it was, it was really well played from Jazz, right? With the target Absolutely. selection, able to get into the red buff pit, able to lock down the Zeri right after she went for the spark surge. It was like, Zeri ultimate, immediately stunned. And just couldn't really play out the fight from there. I mean, they were already losing, uh, thanks to a, a really nice kind of engage at Paranoia from Brecken. But um, that really sealed the deal. And now with Baron, with Rift Herald, this has the potential to be a really big push. It's Sammy and a Kroom off on the flank. Kroom could go for a slingshot to try and start off a fight. And it will, in fact, just be Mythic Ascension going for the reset and spending their hard-earned gold. So right now we have a 10-stack Magi's on Jazz. Jazz feeling quite confident this game. Has the Roa, has the Lich being completed, and now has and has this Magi's going forward. He has the Zeal. He's got a lot of items at this point in the game. Yeah, one uh, level off from 16 as well, actually three levels up on the Yasuo. I don't know how that even happened. It seems like Sammy has been having a pretty good game. He's got yeah. a bunch of kills on the Yasuo, but just down so far in experience somehow. I just want to say one thing as a just a, a, a mild funny thing. Even Masters players only have nine vision at 23 minutes. <laughs> it's okay sometimes if you don't put out those words, ladies and gentlemen. No, I'm just... <laughs> I mean, he's getting some vision from the ultimate. Oh, right? yeah. I oh, guess yeah, that's yeah. probably not reflected in the vision score. As, uh, yes, yeah. be a slingshot that's not really going to find the targets. Now Kroom is stunned up, and the Zack, the poor Zack, was just a little bit caught out in his own jungle. That was not your Gromp anymore, Kroom. And he will pay for that thievery as Zeus Blade. Ooh, that looks like it was going to connect. Babiaga flashing Ooh. for it and will find it. Picks up the double on the vein. And it's now Jazz moving forward. Gets another gold card. The tier two in bot likely to be the next target as Kraith with some armor stacked up is pretty comfortable now in this 1v1 against the Oswo. So to clarify about my earlier point, Jazz, I'm just 100% joking. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think. I love you. It's, it's okay. Please don't kill me. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> That's going to be a really big pickup uh, for Ascension here, A, getting those kills, but then now having the Hextech drag, you have more ability, haste, and attack speed, which obviously just very, very strong in, in general as just a stat. Yeah, it's feeling really, really strong for sure. It's, uh, I mean, I just... I look at these, these items coming through for the side of, of Mythic Ascension. It's, like you said, TF5010 with the 14 stack Medjai's. And Vayne just completing the wit's end as the third item. So just a ridiculous amount of attack speed now for Baba Yaga. And assu I, assuming the Vayne can stay safe, like there's, she's just going to one-shot everybody. I don't want to be doom and gloom, but this is looking quite rough here. At the 20, quickly 25-minute mark, we have a 10k gold difference. We have around the same objectives, but... And like for dragons wise, but more of the Rift Heralds slash Barons have gone over the side of Fallen. And obviously the kills. Okay, Papa, two levels down, going for the 1v1. It's not working out for him. Uh -oh. Goes Papa now for Jazz. One more gold card. The healing, pretty good from the Silas with the reinforcements. For Jazz, even better. Baba Yaga picks up number seven. Papa and Papa is pretty close there, playing for time, almost getting some more of those W procs off, getting that healing. But hey, I have teammates that are around are allowed to be around here. Yeah, as uh Grace. Even taunting aggressively on the Oslo. Sammy now looking for it. Lands the knockup. But Chen's full HP. You're not going to take that one in, really. Yeah, right now they're just freely just wailing away at this bot tower. And oh. Simmeral trying to do the best they can to get some damage from afar, but at this at this okay. very ultra shock laser not too much. Shot. And that's a very nice dodge away from Babiaga. Trying to try to come through, though. It's a double knockup. Sammy onto the vein. Can he finish off Babiaga? The condemn is so good, though. The stand united good as well. Onto the vein. The taunt for the peel. Babiaga still alive. Oh, still alive on the vein okay. in the back line. Jazz with a gold card primed and ready. Locks down the Zeri. Oh. Babiaga takes the last hit. 
It's a crossbow bolt straight through the heart oh. for Fallen fans. As if the fight goes three for one. And it's going to be oh. Mythic Ascension looking for the end. Wow. Bobby Yaga just being able to live on that light and it, throughout that fight is quite criminal. He lives with just slivers of HP. Just like Jazz Absolutely with the from that Nexus turret shot. Actually going to have to back away. With a TF, such low uh -oh. HP, they're not confident to uh -oh. go for the Nexus turret push. Uh, uh, Jazz? Uh, the Flash didn't quite get in range to go for the E. Oh, Sammy almost had that kill, but not quite. Yeah, I mean, right now, TF has the RFC completed. He has the Lich Bane. He has a bunch of percentile movement speed buffs. So he's going to be able to run away from some of these dicier scenarios. Yeah. Yeah, the TF really, really strong. The Vayne really strong as well. After that last fight, went ahead and picked yeah. up a Phantom Dancer. Oh. Still on four items now is <laughs> Baba Yaga. Uh, if you thought he had crazy attack speed before, just you wait and see. What are, what are what are we at now? Yeah, we're at two point five, just just flat right now. And obviously with attack Lethal Temple, that can go up. above that limit. Yeah, we're at two point five attack speed at this point. Oh no. Yeah. Kroom, watch um, out, buddy. Also, when the Baron spawns, it will insta die. Oh like, yeah, yeah. Instantaneously die. Um. Just from Bane. Like, there's no other really good Baron takers on this team. It's just Bane. Doesn't matter. And I think I think that's enough. Yeah. Oh, it is. It is for sure enough. Um, but they do have to maintain maintain control over the area um, because they don't want to get jumped on. Okay. Well, they might not even need the Baron because Kroom is getting engaged on right now. As Vayne, yeah, just gonna watch on him. One more auto would do it. Uh, it's actually, yep, there it is. Okay, there's the last auto, and now it's Zeri flashing underneath the inhibitor turret, able to stay alive for now. But without the jungler, the Baron should just be a formality, and then uh, the push to end. Right there, they had to spend they had to spend four ultimates just to get out of that scenario with only Kroom dying. But I, there, there's very few ultimates returned from the side of Ascension, and this looks like this Hi, might be your dagger here with the Baron. Yeah, right. I mean, there's a, there's a dragon spawning soon, but I don't think anybody really cares about that too much. Uh, so we should just be you know, grouping up mid here. The Paranoia should be available relatively soon. Uh, Destiny, a little bit longer. Looks like uh, we actually do care about the Dragon Chaos, as yeah. Mythic Ascension. Just going to go ahead and pick that one up while they wait for those ultimate cooldowns. Why not pad those objective stats Why? for our customs? Yeah. They can take it, so oh, they will. This is a bad season to be any objective at all. Just... <laughs> I mean, just be a Baba Yaga just melting through these, just killing the the big purple guy in the top lane, and this dragon just 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 was born. He just came back to life and just instantly take it down. Not having that a great time. Scary, man. Yeah, it's like, uh, the objectives really don't stand a chance. I don't think Mythic Fallen honestly stands much of a chance at this point in the game either. Yeah, it's, uh, I think I have resets. to concur. Yeah, the reset did come through from DJ. But able to make his way back out onto the map with the hex gate. And here comes the destiny. They're trying to catch Silas on the recall. Papa gonna be able to go in with the chains, but only level 15 still gonna get stunned up, trying to do some alcove gaming. It's not gonna work out. It's not gonna work out, Chaos. As Papa, he's on the run. He's gonna land another Oof. chain. Jazz didn't even need any help. Paranoia cast there just for just for fun. As the Mythic Ascension mid laner finds the solo kill. As I say, right there, Jazz just doesn't even actually have to go for the solo bolo by himself. He can just bite time. And you you know that yeah, you know that Brecken's coming in with the paranoia. You know that DJ is gonna be coming to help this fight. But Jazz just gonna style on him and just gonna go for the 1v1 taking down Papa here. But now they're gonna yeah. be going for this top side. Easily that turret uncontested for T2. One. The tier two, as you say, does go down and hit their turret should be next to jazz gets the gold card onto the yasso sam gonna toss out the wind wall now trying to defend this turret for as long as possible maybe kroom can find a miracle engage here they're waiting for silas to respawn five seconds but jazz isn't gonna give him the chance he flashes over the wall he destroys the support and now another minion wave comes in it's shen kraythal already taking down mid lane top lane will be the last to fall and now only the nexus turrets remain for Mythic Fallen. 
Looks like Fallen, they indeed will be, as Mythic Ascension going on the final push. First Nexus turret taken down. Sammy looking Ooh. for the knockup, gets it onto two. Will it be enough? Sammy, Kroom no. in the middle of all of these members, but the Yasuo gets taken out. There's just too much damage. The health bars are too massive. The Stand United comes through. Such a massive shield. And Baba Yaga just does way too much freaking damage. As Mythic Ascension will rise up and secure their place in the upper bracket semi. <laughs> just rolling into the fountain. Not caring about any of the damage. Just going in for Ace and getting that triple at the end there. Oh... Wow, well played by the side of Ascension there. Yes, definitely well played. Two very different compositions, uh, but this second game especially was very clean overall. Only giving up nine kills, ended the game in just over 30 minutes. Uh, and just really impressive overall. It was Jazz and Baba Yaga both deathless in this one, Chaos. Zero deaths for both carries. And also, Nocturne only had one death. Had that one death early on when he had the big old shutdown. But otherwise, Shen was abused in the early game, went 0-5 and 5, and then turned around to 4-5 and 11. And then outside of that, it's just Leona having to dive in and then going to be dying. So just very, very few deaths across the board and just all their teammates just finding a lot of value throughout this game. Yeah, But clean. Jazz putting in so much work throughout that game. The single target stuns and just picking them out at the correct opportunities. I he did a great job here. Definitely agree. Is your POG? We gotta do. Are we giving it to Jazz again? Both yeah. POGs for the mid laner. Yeah, I, I I think it has to go to Jazz again. I think he did a great job. Obviously, they did a little bit of a switch up here, and Cheesy was then gonna be going against him. I th I if I recall correctly, I believe that Yasuo does counter Jazz, but Jazz able to just kind of roll with the punches, able to fight through the counter and putting in a lot of work here. Yeah, I mean, the Yasuo, theoretically, you know, you can kind of try and match the wave clear. You can wind wall the gold card. You know, there's definitely some favorable interactions for the Yasuo in that matchup. And overall, I think Sammy does deserve a shout out because I think we yeah. were really hoping to see more from this player. And we did. Sammy had a much better game two uh, than he did game one. And uh, it, honestly, there were a couple of points where it looks like the Yasuo may even have an angle to carry this game. But uh, in, in the end, there just wasn't enough else going right on the map for Mythic Fallen in this one. And the game ended up slipping through their fingers pretty quickly. And and Mythic Ascension just didn't give them any angles to come back into it. The team fighting was clean, even with a composition that doesn't necessarily excel at the team fighting. They played the fights out very, very well. And I think that's one of the main reasons why you're looking towards Jazz as you're your MVP once again for the second game. Personally, I would kind of want to give it to Brecken for finding the early lead that started the snowball in the first place. Yeah, the Nocturne doesn't have as impressive a, of, a, of a KDA in this game. Um, but, I mean, when your mid laner is 8-0 and 18, there's really no way to, to have a more impressive yeah. scoreline than that. Um, but I mean, I, you I still have honestly... a 16 KDA on the Nocturne, so it's like yeah, nothing yeah, to scoff I, at by any means. Absolutely. And um, it was it was really just it was strong performances across the board in this one for Mythic Ascension. There you really there's no way that your your vote could be bad in terms of player of the game because they all played great in this game. Um, but yeah, I'm I, as I mentioned earlier, Mythic Fallen they're not out of it just yet. They still have another life in the lower bracket where they can try and fight back and uh, possibly even get a rematch against Ascension. Do you have any closing thoughts on tonight's matchup, Verdant Chaos? You know, any of favorite moments for you? Uh, anything you're looking forward to as we draw towards the end of Season 14? Okay, I'm hoping that later on, I saw that Jazz had a lot of GP gameplay, and I haven't seen a lot of uh, GP in some of these games, so I'm, I'm hoping I get to cast one of these and I just get to watch him frag out. I, I personally just love that champion, so I'm, I'm excited for that coming up. But... Uh, I think Fallen actually had really, really good potential in some of these games. So I don't think they're going to be completely out of the bracket. And yet, obviously, uh, moving down to like the loser side of things. But they still have a chance of redemption. And I think they very much can do so. They had very good team coordination. And, I mean, look at team and game one. They worked together very well. They had a large deficit. But they came back through it. Obviously, they weren't able to pick it up. They weren't able to pick up the game and win. 
but they did a great job working together as a team. So I think I, I don't get down on yourselves at Fallen. Yeah, I mean, I we know we have it. Uh, we know that they have it in them, right? They were able to take down the first seeded team. Uh, and they, you know, they they definitely have that dog in them, right? So uh, they're not out of this bracket just yet. Definitely still lots to play for for both of these teams. That is going to pretty much do it for us tonight, I believe. Um, sorry about the the error on the stream, guys, in terms of the, the score. Uh, it can be a little bit confusing with the UI I have over here for the, the inting bot. Uh, the names were actually backwards as opposed to what's actually on the stream. And with the logos being identical, that also made things a little bit confusing. But it is correct now. And for anybody who watched the match, you do, of course, know that Mythic Ascension were able to walk away the victors with a 2-0 score. So congratulations to them on a very strong performance tonight. Looking to see if they can push on towards the finals. But that's it for this evening. So for myself from Chaos, from the entire production team over here at Style Esports, thank you all so very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Good night.